Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So, uh, okay, hopefully, you have checked your midterm score. And we're going to continue uh, our lecture that we are still now in the partial derivatives. Okay, so before we go, uh, let me give you some um, another example for the uh, partial derivatives. Okay, so let's start with uh, a function. So let's start with a function of two variables. So if you want to take the partial with respect to each of the variables, for example, we take the partial x, then we are going to have we are going to have a product rule okay, between the x and e with power of x squared a y. So remember, when we take the partial x, we are going to make the y as a constant. So this is going to be uh, e x squared y and then plus x, and e to the x squared y will be, uh, or let me write, let me write with, um, this is x, and then uh, dx of e squared y, if you want to make sure that your steps is correct all the time, and this can be written as x squared y plus so the differentiated from e with power of x squared y, this is going to be uh, 2x, and y is a, uh, uh, a constant, so we still need to write y. And then e, x squared y. So we need to multiply with x. So this is given you the result. 2x squared y e with power of x squared y. Okay. So this is how we uh, we are doing it uh, partially. Okay. We are taking partial with respect to x. Okay. Now similarly, if we take the partial y, so let's write partial y that and since the partial y will only affect the variable y which which in our case is on the e so basically we are going just to to take derivative like that right so we say that the e with power x squared y take the chain rule so x squared become uh, the x squared becomes a constant. So we are just taking the variable y and we differentiate become just x squared. So x squared x become x cubed e x squared y. Now how about if we have the We have the f x y is sine, and inside this, this sine function we have x over one plus y. So, if we are going to uh, evaluate the partial x, what we are going to do? So here's what we can do is taking the, the chain rule. So we are going to see the sine in a general as a general functions which of course the derivative of sine is cosine so we are just first writing down the general functions and derive and becomes cosine and then write the inside functions x over 1 plus y and then multiply with the chain rule of the inside functions right And then we can solve this. 
So derive the inside function. So it's call sign. And we derive only with respect to x. So x become just 1 over 1 plus y. And I think we can just stop until there okay, for partial x. And partial y, we do the same thing. We got cosine. We write first x 1 plus y. And taking the derivative with respect to y, x over 1 plus y. So this is, it seems, this is similar to what we have in the 1 over x situation. If we differentiate, it becomes negative 1 over x squared. So same thing with this part. Since x is just a constant, then this is going to be equal, negative, Cosine. This negative comes from the derivatives of the partials. So the partials become uh, x over 1 plus y squared. This is partial x. And this is partial one. So as long as you you are, uh, I think, practicing the uh, partial and know how to uh, step by step to to derive in terms of partials, and if you keep consistent, I think you should be able to familiarize with the system. Okay. Okay, now if we move on and we think uh, what is actually the partial derivative? Can we imagine in a picture or in a graph to visualize that we understand, maybe we understand um, easily from, from the, the graph. Okay. So if we graph the like, like surface like this okay, and we pick a point and let's say the point is point B as uh, you can see from here. P at the um, ABC, ABC is a uh, um, real numbers, uh, it's a real value. And we see that they, this surface is coming across two curves, which namely uh, C1 and C2, right? You see C1 and C2. And, at, and exactly at the point, okay, the point of P, we see that it has a tangential line. We have a tangent line, okay, T1 and T2 that is um, aligned with the C1 and C2, okay? So recall that we have Z is our function, okay? And we call this is a surface, so this is supposed to be represent, represent surface S, okay? And of course the P, the point P is on S, right? And then, if we take a plane, Y equal B, okay? So we take Y equal B, which means that this, let's say, suppose that B is on, on this side here, right? B is on there. So Y equal B will be a plane that is cutting, crossing the precisely this part, right? That's our plane y equal b, okay? And then imagine we also have x equal a. So at x equal a, let's suppose that here is a, and we have, write it different color, a is blue. So a is will be here. And suppose that this is going to be crossing the surface like that, which means that both y equal b and x equal e, x equal a is uh, they are uh, uh, restrict our observations, restrict at uh, or to 
curve one, and x equal a is restricted to the curve two, right? And both C1 and C2, they are crossing the point P. And now, the C1 and C2, we can imagine in terms of, um, let's say uh, we, we, we assume that curve 1 and curve 2 is, a, is another function. So let's take the C1 as um, G of x equal f of x b okay, because b is a constant in the plane okay and then let um, c2 is function of y so we take the x as a constant right and then the variable is y okay so if we apply our calculus one uh, rules for, for these two functions, g of x and h of y, we can get the tangent line, right? We can get the tangent line, which is at the later of the day that will be the t1 and t2. So if we take that, then perhaps this is going to be t1 is g prime at a, which is our partial x at a b and the second one will be t2 is equal the, 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 the slope okay, or the tangent at b and we call this the partial y a, b. okay so essentially what partial means in terms of geometric perspective is actually a tangent that is across the plane. Both came from the x and y axis. So in calculus one, if you remember, we only have the tangent, right? Because we have only one, right? But now, since we have the surface and we see from isometric perspective, so we can see the three dimension, so we have two tangent lines. And these two tangent lines, it's some sort of taking this point here, and if you think clearly, I think we haven't yet uh, discussed it, but this is actually making a plane okay, that will be in another, another discussion. So from this, that two tangent line, we can also make a plane. And that's where the vectors that we learn about line and plane, it's coming to the place. Okay, so we are going to uh, write an equation of first line and then plane to describe how uh, how the point on the surface we can see how it changes basically changing the plane here right it's changing the t2 and t1 okay. so we can interpret that the, the partial is actually the slope of tangent line for two curves, okay, for two curves, okay, C1 and C2. Or let me write here, maybe, let me put this here first, and let me write something. Okay, so partial X at AB, and partial Y at AB, can be interpreted geometrically as the slopes of tangent lines at P, at this point P, A, B, C, to trace C1 and C2 of surface S in planes Y equal B and X equal A. But I think these words 
I hope you can you can understand this word by just taking the picture. So if the question is asking like finding slope in the um, function of two variables, means that you need to find two slopes, two slopes, the partial x and partial y. Okay, uh, just to give you some sort of um, example, if you take these um, z as a function of x, y, let's say this is example. Let's say we have 4 minus x squared minus 2y squared. And this is a paraboloid, if you remember the chapter 12. So if we have this, we could first think on the partial, if you want, partial x, like that, and partial y. Okay, I think we can take a break for a while. Okay, let's go back. Uh, all right. Okay, so uh, as this example, so if we take the, um, let's say, take the point at 1, 1. So we take a uh, partial x at 1, 1. So this is going to be negative 2. And partial y at also 1, 1. This is going to be negative 4. So as we can see, we have these two supposed to be the, the slopes or the tangent. Then, if we take uh, the, 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 the graph, just like what we did in, in this case here, so we are going to have the planes that y equal 1 here, and it goes to be, the, the, the slopes goes to be uh, toward, uh, towards downside like this, the C1. This is the T1, okay, supposed to be, and this is the T2. You'll see that the slopes is downward in the positive x direction for a partial x, which is the negative 2. Okay, just um, slight examples how to uh, visualize uh, the partials. Okay, now the next thing is if we take the, the higher derivatives. Okay, so this is supposed to be the higher derivatives. Which means you can have, for example, the second order, the third order, okay? So right here. So we say this one here, and let's start from the first one. This one says that we have partial x, and then we partially derive again with x. So we say partial x, x, so x, x. Okay. So this means that we partial first with x, and then partial again with x. Yeah, but but you can have two pathway, right? X or Y. So X, X or X, Y or Y, X or Y, Y. Okay. So that's X, X. And you have X, Y, right? It means that partial X first and then partial Y. And then uh, partial y and then partial x. And then lastly, it's partial y and then partial y. And the, the right side is just how you write in different um, alternatives. Okay? You can write as in terms of the Leibniz notations. You can write in terms of um, using the z or f. It's the same thing. This is all this we call the second partial derivative. So let me write on the, on the right side. Just a quick example for some, uh, some uh, points on this uh, second partials. So if we take, uh, for example, the function, okay, for example, that is our functions, okay? 
Now if we take partial x, okay. So we take x as our variable and y as our constant. So we have 3 y squared and y becomes 0 because of constant. And we have 10 x y squared, right? Okay, if we take another partial from this partial x, let's say partial xx. So the y becomes 0, and we take x as our variable, so 10 y squared, okay? And then from partial x, let's try another root. Let's try y. So this becomes 6y, right? And then this become uh, y squared become 2y, so 20 xy, okay? Now let's start from another partial y. So partial y from our function, we get 6xy minus 2, and then plus 10x squared y. And then partial y, y, going to be 6x plus 10x squared. And if we take another partial with another roots, we get 6y plus 20xy. And you'll notice that we end up with the same result for xy and yx. And this is another theorem that I think best to describe here. That is just saying that the partials when you have x, y, or you start from y, x, is going to be the same results. It's called the Clairaut's uh, theorem. And of course, if we take another steps, let's say if we have the third derivatives in partials, the Clairaut still we can still um, um, apply. For example, uh, if we take the um, x, y, y, or um, y, x, y, or the y, y, x, they are the same. You can notice that it has the same numbers of the variables. So y is 2, x is 1. And no matter how your forms, how you arrange the order, the result at the end it will be the same. This is the same Clairaut's theorem. And you can increase in more and more uh, partials if you want to, to see the orders, and the results will be the same. Okay, now that is uh, mostly the, the main course, the partial derivative. The next part is, will be the visuals, the tangent planes, and how we approximate the, uh, the, um, the surface okay, with the linear approximations. Okay, so the next one here is the tangent plane. So basically, this is the same as we did before. Okay. So we already know what is T1, what is T2, C1, C2. They are basically uh, giving you the, the partials, okay? the partial X, partial Y. And they are making a plane, right? They are making a plane. So equation of plane, if you remember. So equation of plane. If you remember, uh, plane passing through point P. Okay. So let's say point P is at um, at some point. Okay. 
So the equation of plane will be A B like that and C, right? So what is A B C? A B C is taken from the normal factor, right? The normal factor. This is what we have in, in factors. But then let's let's suppose that we are going to to write in uh, different forms. Okay. So let me write this on the uh, right here, the right side here. So let's define the whole thing, the whole equation of plane, defined by or maybe uh, using the another parameter. So let a, the small a, is negative a over c, and b is negative b over c. Uh, to just to re re rewrite the form. Okay, so this part here comes. Let's define by c first. So um, a over c, and then b over c. And then c and then 0. And we can write c minus c0. This is negative a over c and negative b over c. Okay, so we are going to exchange this a over c and b over c into another constant that are simplified. So we have z. This is a plus b. And then we could imagine, let me write first. Now we could imagine that if if y equal y0, we get that this is our equation. And if x equal x0, then the equations will be b, y minus y0, like that. Okay. And in terms, we could see, maybe let me write another left. And in terms, we could write that a is z divided by x, and we could see b, that is z divided by y. And this is, in turn, is our difference in z and x, and difference in z and y. We could say that this is our intuitive definition, of the slope. So this is the slope that is our t1 of our partial x, right? And this is the differences for dz dy or t2 or the partial one. So we could write the equation plane in terms of this with a, b as our slopes with respect to both uh, a is for partial x, b is for a uh, partial y. And then as a conclusion, we can write this as our equation of tangent plane. Okay. So suppose f is a continuous partial derivatives, and the equation of the tangent plane, we can write and using the uh, partial x and partial y immediately. Okay. So it's actually the same as our original equation of plane. We are just changing a few things to make it in, into our function uh, of x, y. Okay. So how do we get this to this point here? So this is actually, we tweak the formula here, the original formula, the equation of plane. So we tweak that we want to make 
this equation of plane in terms of z equal f of x y. Okay, so that is the key. Okay. So if you for, uh, forget in the exam, then remember that we need to force out this uh, formation. Okay. So force out that z is function of x y. So we need to make it into z equal something, and that that something will be our constant that is essentially the partial x and partial y. So step by step to find the tangent plane is first, if you get the information of the uh, functions, first is finding the partials, both for x and y, and take the points at which point, and then you can just use the, 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 the formulation of the plane and you can just put all together inside. Okay, okay. so a little bit example here, down here. So suppose that we have a z function and then we have a point uh, find tangent plane at point one one three. I remember that z is in terms of function x y and this is um, if you remember the paraboloid right paraboloid so first is taking the partial x and and partial y i think it's, it's quite simple we could just derive and that's our partial x and we take at x equal one and y equal one this is four this is two so we get the a and b right so we could directly write equations as z minus three equal a partial x four x minus one plus partial y is two <coughs> y minus one If you want to um, solve this, you can solve for x plus 2y, so minus 6, minus 6 plus 3 is minus 3. So this is the equation of tangent plane from the uh, surface functions. Okay, now this is... Uh, elliptic paraboloid right and this is how it looks like if we take the the, uh, the graphs so that's that's our tangent plane and this is the some segments from the uh, from the surface the elliptic paraboloid and then if we take some closer look so if we take some zoom okay so we zoom in zoom in so we take zoom like so here's zoom in so zoom and another zoom okay, if you have the textbook you can see that we see that actually if you take a look at the gap between the surface and the tangent plane the gap is getting closer right the gap is getting closer together and this in turn is a sign that we can use some approximations okay, for the, the for the um, the nearby okay, for the nearby points so when when x y so this is a good so good approximation right good approximation when x y is near one one right for 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 this case so we can also say that our plane equation. Can also be used as our linear linearizations, so we can also write as L. So 
So we can say that this is actually, we can use this as linearization of f at 1, 1. And we can also use this for, uh, let's say, a tangent plane approximation of f at x, y. Okay. And remember, the closer the x, y with the 1, 1, then the approximation according to the picture is, is getting closer to um, the correct value. Okay. Okay, this is supposed from, from what we have before. So let me just writing down the um, the general rules. So recall, or I think I just get in the, this one here, so I don't need to write for that. Okay, recall that we have the, uh, this is uh, maybe just one. So recall that we have the Z, okay? Or maybe let me write more clear. So Z, this is F, X. Okay. And let's say this is at uh, nearby AB, which means that ZO or Z0 is our FAB. So we can rewrite this in terms of that part, of this part. So we can approximate the value of the Z. And how we use it is basically the same as we use in calculus one. The difference is we are now having a two variables x, y. Okay. And that's the linear approximations. Uh, there are some parts that I think I will skip for now. I will just adding into just additional contents like this one, the differentials this differential, but this one is important. So uh, this is going to be the, um, the theorem. So if the partial derivatives, partial x, partial y, they are exist near a, b, and, and they are continuous at a, b, then the uh, function is differentiable at a, b. So this is a differentiability. So let's say we have um, functions. Okay, the first question may be showing that the function differentiable at certain point. So first is we need to take the partial derivatives. Okay. So this is going to be E, right? M plus. We take the um, partials and then this will be X, Y, E, X, Y, right? And then partial Y. This will be X squared. E, X, Y, and taking the number, 
at one zero. So this will be one and zero. So this is one. And this is also one, right? No problem. Okay, and then um, find linearization. The other question. And use to compute If you see the points, 1.1 and negative 0.1, they are the points that near the 1, 0, right? So they are close by, nearby, 1, 0, right? So we could see that perhaps the approximation would be good. So let's write the linearizations, which is the z. You could always write first the uh, the formulation for the um, for the partials in planes. You could always write this, and then write this z equal f one zero plus. Parcel x one zero, x minus one, and then plus partial y one zero, y minus zero, and then we put. Let's say we put z equal f one zero. So this is one. So this is 1 plus 1, so x minus 1, and then plus y. So we are going to have z is actually just x plus y. So the approximations will be x, e, x, y. This will approximate the x plus y. So basically, if you want to compare the results later, you will see that it is going to be closer. The, the value will be close. So you will see that we can just take this 1.1 1 .1 and negative point, uh, point 0.1. It, we take to this x plus 1, and that will be our uh, approximation value. So we could take from this, we could take the app. So, so we want to compute this, right? We want to compute this. We can compute through x plus y. So 1.1 1 .1 minus 0 0.1. So which is just 1. If you take the calculators and try to compute the real value, This is going to be 1.1e 1 1 and a negative 0 0.11. 1. This is will getting close to 0 0.98542. So I think it's quite quite okay. Well, it depends on how much error that we can tolerate in the system. Okay. If it's in in I think in the in the in the macro level, I think this is um, I think pretty good. So if the numbers were not given, and if the question is just asking the uh, approximation is 1.1 uh, negative 0.1, then you need to find in which number that when you put the numbers, maybe you can see that, OK, maybe it's, it's quite close. So you can assume with, with any numbers.
so that you can find this one, and, and then plug into the um, linearizations. So the process is basically uh, similar to the cal plus one process. But now you have the um, this equation of plane instead of just equation of line. Remember that in cal plus one, we have linear approximation, which is the uh, linear based equation. Right? So we approximate with our uh, our tangent, our tangent one. But now we approximate using our tangent plane. Okay. okay. Uh, I think I will just end up until here for now. So next week we are continuing from the chain rule, and perhaps next week we'll we are going to finish the chapter fourteen. Perhaps there's some few uh, few sections that I will think I will, I will skip. Okay. And then perhaps within this week, uh, or maybe next week, just check up your Moodle. I will prepare uh, another online quiz. That is for chapter 12 and 13. Okay. But that will be online, and you can choose which day you are, you are going to take. I will give you like several days, maybe four to five days to complete. So you can choose which day you prefer. Okay. I think not yet. 12 and 13 first. Okay. okay, so yeah.